let's lift up our hands to heaven and ask the spirit of grace to help us one more time one more time go ahead and pray king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you the king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you one more time we're praying king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you hallelujah john said i wept because no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the seals thereof and the elder tapped him and said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah even the root of david is worthy deserving he says i looked and i saw upon a throne a lamb as though had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god you know the meaning of that statement the eyes represent revelation and the horns represent authority for every dimension of revelation in the spirit there is an authority component that must justify that revelation meaning every time the word of god comes you must contend for number one the revelation but press further to access the authority component that gives you the grace to defend that truth so it's not enough to have rhema it's not enough to have revelation the end of your pursuit is not complete until the authority component that backs your revelation is also received the bible says there are a group of people who are ever learning but never coming onto the knowledge of the truth so it is not enough to know it is not enough to be aware it is not enough to be excited you must press for that understanding and then with it you must pray for the engracing that empowers you to be a living proof of that which you have received hallelujah please be seated may god bless you in the name of jesus now i i just want to introduce um i call them foundational pillars i was very blessed when i saw the theme for this conference the resurrection and i think pastor this represents the epicenter most believers do not excel in their faith adventure primarily because our knowledge spiritual knowledge is not organized is not synergized to produce a victorious believer there is a way god designed that men would know him and there is an apostolic order of accessing spiritual knowledge hallelujah an apostolic model that was delivered to the early church that means there is a template by which the average believer must submit himself to to be holistically built now you are at liberty to freelance spiritual knowledge here and there but it will not be organized to produce a victorious life this is the tragedy with many believers so we know little of many dimensions in the spirit like a man who wants to build a house like this you have a zinc here you have the cement here you have the ions here but you are not able to organize them to produce a victorious life so there's hardly any dimension of truth you communicate that believers are absolutely ignorant of 
the key is to be able to organize it to produce a victorious life we know that prayer is important in the believers work we know that giving is important in the believers work are we together we know that a sound mind is, is important in the believers work we know that an understanding of authority is important but to be able to synergize them together to produce a victorious christian life is where many people are found wanting and it is for this singular reason the bible says he gave unto some that he led captivity captive and he gave gifts as men to men some he gave apostles some he gave prophets some he gave evangelists pastors and teachers to what end the bible says for the perfecting the maturing of the saints that the saints now in their matured state will do the work of the ministry that we all together will grow into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ he says not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive hallelujah so it is important for us to know that we must contend for methodical spiritual growth and so when I saw this teaching about resurrection, for me, my heart really reached out to the teaching because in this single topic contains the power, the victory of the believer in Christ. First Corinthians chapter 15, please. Let's begin our reading from verse 1. And I please request that you lend me your attention. First Corinthians 15 and verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which i preached unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand notice the construction of paul paul is a very intelligent man not just a spiritual man his discourse is very articulate he's now saying there is an understanding you stand upon he's doing a recap and then he says verse 2 now by which ye also are saved if ye keep in memory what i preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain verse 3 now it says for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received what did he deliver how that christ died for our sins according to the scripture number one number two verse four and that he was buried number two and then the third point is that he rose again on the third day according to the scripture verse 4 now it says he was seen of cephas and of the 12 next verse please after that he was seen ab with ab um, above of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part are alive unto this time let's stop there because of time the full text is to verse 20 so he gives us the framework of what we call the gospel or salvation he says this is the truth upon which you stand that number one christ died for your sin according to the scripture number two he was buried the bible says and then number three that he rose again are we together now and that in his resurrection he was seen of many as proof there are certain foundational pillars that all believers must have if we are to walk victorious this becomes the basis of your faith this becomes the basis of your exploits this becomes the basis of your confidence the understanding of the believer as far as redemption is concerned was designed to be framed around these truths and i'll just list four of them very quickly number one the first foundational pillar that represents the basis for the gospel, the basis for salvation, is the earth work of Jesus or his humanity. The journey that culminated to salvation and the victory of the believer did not just start at his death. It is important to understand the implication of Jesus' becoming a man. Are we together? first timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 please let's hurry up so that i keep my promise the bible says and without controversy watch this now 
Great is the mystery of godliness. What is the mystery? That God became a man. If God did not become a man, number one, he would not be able to die. Are we together now? Because God does not die. Spirits don't die. No. It's not a reality with spirits. The concept of death in the realm of the spirit is separation. The distance between you and reality. That is how death is measured in the spirit. But in the physical realm, in terms of cessation of, li of existence, as it were, living, being separated from your physical body, it does not happen to spirits. So God needed to become a man. Because I hope you know the Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. And there are many conditions for you to be called a man. I was discussing yesterday at the meeting with um, Pastor Akin. Not every creation of God can be called man. There are certain conditions that must be satisfied for any entity to be called man. Number one, you must be a spirit. Number two, that spirit must be domiciled in a mortal body. If that spirit is not domiciled in a mortal body, it cannot be called man. Number three, there must be solical expressions that connect that spirit to the body. The will, the emotion, and the intellect. Any entity that has these factors coexisting together is called man. And they are the only legitimate people who have access to authority and power upon the earth. Are we learning now? So the humanity of Jesus is very important. In John chapter 1 and verse 14, John 1, 14, very quickly, the Bible lets us know, John 1, 14, help us media. It says, and the word became flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. Even as of the father, full of grace and truth. Why did Jesus become a man? Very quickly, number one. He came as an accurate representation of the Father. He came as a correction to our understanding of the misunderstood God. Jesus did not just come to die alone. His first assignment was to correct the idea that the prophets hitherto had proposed about God. Because until Jesus came, the basis for the accurate knowledge of God was not possible. Are we together? Yes. And so men wrote their understanding of God based on the perspectives that they saw. So Jesus came as perfect theology. He walked upon the earth and gave us an opportunity to study him so that we will be able to learn God more accurately. This is very important. Jesus also came walking upon the earth as a pattern man. He came to create a model for a victorious earth walk. If Jesus just appeared and died without growing and walking upon the earth, we would not have a template for the model for a victorious life. Are we together? So the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, we can study from the earth work of Jesus, a portrait, God's intent as to how the believer was designed to function. The humanity. Why did he become a man? He became a man so that he could put upon himself the sin of all men and die. You find that for reference in Romans chapter 5, 12 to 19. My apologies that I'm just rushing and stretching us. Romans chapter 5, 12 to 19. The Bible says, Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world. How did sin enter? By one man. And death came by sin. So death was a natural consequence. Death was a product. It was an evolution with time as a result of the presence of sin it was important for jesus to become a man he could not carry the sin of the world as god no he had to become a man if you want to understand salvation redemption and the victory that was derived thereof you must understand and respect the humanity of jesus are we learning now yes His humanity was the basis I wrote here for his becoming sin. If he did not become a man, he would not be able to be seen for us to now be the righteousness of God. The very next point, let me hurry up. The next pillar upon which redemption lies is his death. 
So number one, his humanity, his earth walk. Number two, his death. Why did he have to die? Isn't it amazing that as powerful as God is, he could not cast sin out of men. There had to be a legitimate protocol that was followed. Amazing. As powerful as God is, you would think he would just make one divine pronouncement. After all, we are his creation. It would not be injustice if he did that. And yet he chose to follow the route of death. Why did he die? Let me summarize very quickly. The death of Jesus gave him the legal right to go to Hades. Without death, there would be no legitimate path for him to go to Hades, the place of the dead, where he would purchase victory for the believers. Acts chapter 2 and verse 27. Is someone learning already? Acts 2, 27. My God. You see, this is the understanding that sponsors confidence in the spirit. When you stand to speak to the sick and say, be healed. When you stand to prophesy to your destiny. When you stand to pray. There is an understanding wherein from whence your confidence comes. This is it. The Bible says, because Paul was, Peter was preaching now. Thou will not leave thy soul in hell. Speaking about Jesus. Neither thou will suffer your holy one to see corruption. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 14 and 15. Let's hurry up. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. Why did Jesus die? Blotting out every handwriting. That death granted him access to Hades. And that was where this happened. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. The Bible says he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. The next verse, please. The Bible says, and having spoiled principalities and powers. Where did that happen? He made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. What was the significance of his death, therefore? Number one, his death was the highest revelation of God's love for us. Greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. The death of Jesus was proof indeed of God's love. John 15, 13, Romans 5, 8. His death was the highest revelation of God's love. Give us Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love towards us. Let's read together. In that while we were yet sinners, uh -huh, Christ died for us. So his death for us was proof of his love. Now watch this. In his death, I wrote here, the penalty for sin was paid and the legal claims of justice was satisfied. It was not in his hanging on the cross. It was in his dying. When he died, the legal claims of justice was satisfied and the price for sin was paid. Mark 10, 45. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45, please. Mark 10, 45. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. Don't be tired of scriptures. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and to give his life as a... Take note of that word, ransom. Terrorism has helped us sadly to understand what ransom means. Are we together? He gave his life as a ransom, the means to buy back. He gave his life as a ransom. Colossians 1.22. Colossians 1.22. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 22. Do we have that? Thank you. In the body of his flesh, that through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. What was the means for that presentation? Death. It was through death that he now presented us holy, unblameable, and unreprovable. Let me give you the last scripture. Hebrews 2 and verse 4. Please write it down. This is very important. Many believers know Jesus died, but they do not know why he died. The Bible says, God also bearing them witness. Hebrews 2.14. Is that what we have there? Hebrews 2 and verse 14. Thank you. For as much then 
as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he said he also himself likewise took part of the same let's read together that through death hallelujah he might destroy him that had the power of death how did he destroy him that had the power of death through death not through speaking not through prophesying through death the next pillar that represents the basis for salvation and redemption is his burial this is an aspect most believers do not even know anything about they just think death then they think resurrection the value of resurrection is that you understand his humanity you understand his death you understand his burial why was he buried let me show you very quickly number one the burial proved that he really died the burial gave evidence to his death luke 23 50 to 53 please if a burial did not happen there would be no basis for you to believe that he actually died and behold there came a man called joseph joseph of arimathea a counselor a wise and a good man and he was a just man next verse please very quickly the bible says the same had consented the counsel and deed of them the bible says he was of arimathea the city of the jews and so on and so forth next verse this man went to pilate and begged for what the body of jesus he didn't beg for jesus he begged for the body the dead body of jesus next verse and he took it down and wrapped it in linen you don't wrap a man who is alive that way he wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher and it was hewn in stone wherein no man had ever laid burial actually happened a man donated his grave he wrapped jesus like lazarus was wrapped are we together see the way they wrap people those days even if you were lying you would die hallelujah that they will wrap you in a way that you, there was no hope it was over so it's not like he was just put in a nice coffin and maybe he had the opportunity to pretend and breathe he was wrapped they they knew what it meant to wrap people that way jesus really died are we together jesus really died hallelujah the burial proved that he really died it gave evidence to his death now watch this the burial was what allowed the resurrection power to be on display we would never see and appreciate the resurrection power if he was not buried because where the burial happened was also where resurrection started are we learning first corinthians 15 55 to 56 you see that i'm being very simple this morning because i want us to understand it was on the basis of the burial that this statement could become fulfilled oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory if he was left on the cross probably you could speak of death but you would not be able to speak of the grave verse the next verse let's finish it the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory hallelujah now we'll take time to deal with the resurrection hopefully in the evening but just for you to know as a fact first corinthians 15 3 to 8 we already read it that jesus did not just die and remain in the grave the Bible lets us know based on the authority of scripture and the authority from eyewitnesses that he actually resurrected. The Bible says, next verse please, and that he was buried and that he rose again. Someone say again. again. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And the entire text to verse 20 was a defense of the resurrection because i hope you know the primary difference those days between the pharisees and the sadducees was on matters of resurrection they did not believe resurrection happened in fact 
the bible lets us know that when the sepulcher was opened by the angel he sat on it and jesus resurrected by the glory of the father that the people there took report and they were paid and said you know what make sure you argue say the disciples came to steal his body and that he did not resurrect and if there is any other matter we will use money to settle it isn't it amazing that money was the first tool that was deployed to stop the resurrection we will give you money. Just make sure that you do not agree and attest to the fact that he rose again. Now, do, but do you know that it does not stop at the resurrection? As powerful as resurrection is, the final pillar is his exaltation. Because he resurrected and was walking upon the earth. But then the Bible tells us in john chapter 20 from verse 16 and 17 is someone learning now yes jesus said unto her mary and she turned herself and he said rabboni which is to say master this is the resurrected christ jesus said unto her touch me not why for i am resurrected but i have not yet ascended to my father it was Paul that gave us a very clear exegesis of what happened when he went to the heavenly tabernacle because having fulfilled his assignment as savior, he needed to back it up with the assignment as high priest. Are we together? He had to go to the heavenly tabernacle and to pour his blood upon that altar once and for all because the law was that the age of the lamb that was slain is what determined the validity of the atonement. And so the lamb was one year in ancient times and the validity will be one year. Now the lamb that is ageless went to put his blood upon the tabernacle. So you have to measure the age of the lamb that died to know how far the validity of the atonement was equal to the age of the lamb. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, 20 and 21. Paul was speaking to the church in Ephesus still about the exaltation of the christ the bible says that you will know that which he wrote in christ when he raised him from the dead does not stop there and the bible says he set him at his own right hand in heavenly places let's continue far above hallelujah let this be a prophetic word for someone that you are far above because the implication of the resurrection is that it gave the basis for your oneness and then the positional advantage raised up with him, Ephesians chapter 2 says, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named not only in this world, but that which is to come. His exaltation. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, I believe. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, read with me please, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and today he's been exalted and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Let me show you one more scripture and then we'll tie this up. Hebrews chapter 9, please. The significance of his exaltation. Hebrews 9, 11 and 12. While I was studying, I found this scripture and it really blessed me. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, the Bible says, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Next verse, please. The Bible says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. Read with me. He entered in once into the holy place and obtained for us eternal redemption. Not temporal redemption. Eternal redemption. That did not just happen because he died. He had to ascend to heaven and perform that high priestly duty. Now listen. His earth work, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension is the basis for the believer's victory today. If you believe only one of these components, you are not a Christian. 
you are not at liberty to choose anyone to believe it is a journey that must be believed this is the report that you must believe that he came in the flesh are we together now and then that he actually died and that his burial was sealed proof that he died and that he resurrected by the glory of the father and that he's ascended to heaven he purchased for us eternal redemption and he's today seated at the right hand of the father when you understand all of this then you will understand the mystery of identification that while he was going through all of this paul began to teach us that in him and with him we partook of every of these stages when he died we died in him we died with him when he was buried he said buried with him in baptism when he resurrected my god we resurrected with him too are we together now i hope you know that everything he got in his resurrection he had before he died but he had it alone are you getting the whole thing now everything that was given to him the name the office he had it already as god but he relinquished it to come and start the journey but in doing that he connected man by covenant and then when he had it back the joy of salvation is not christ's victory is that it was given to the believer worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive not for himself to receive for us if if your understanding of redemption is that christ is victorious it is powerful but it is not news the news is not christ's victory the news is the fact that the believer today has become a partaker that was what made the death burial and resurrection worth the while as god in heaven he was not threatened he still had all things in him all things consist but the problem was man so he relinquished his glory he came and walked through the protocol that would satisfy the legal claims of justice and in his resurrection and ascension the bible says we are seated with him today can i tell you this is the correct basis the epicenter the pivotal point of any and all activities of the believer when we pray this is the confidence that should sponsor prayer i think one of the biggest problems that we're having in the body of christ now is that we're gradually drifting into self-righteousness and putting our confidence upon things including human activities is the reason why we keep dissipating spiritual energy with no corresponding authority because as well intention as these activities are the basis for the believers excelling is not tied to any achievement of himself are we together now so if you believe in your fasting more than you believe in the finished work of christ you will be disappointed you believe in your prayer more than you believe in the finished work of christ don't get me wrong these are part of the principles that should lead to the believer's victory but that ultimately the reason why the devil respects you is nothing of yourself it is what you were given this is powerful For as long as Satan can get us to believe that somebody will be healed just because I prayed, just because I fasted, just because I studied the Bible and all of these things, you are already defeated. You will have what looks like a semblance of victory, but it will never add up. Because the jealousy of God will mandate that he becomes the epicenter behind everything that glorifies Christ. I have studied some of these mighty men that were used by God very greatly. And you see, the kind of spiritual exercises in fasting and prayer and consecration that they went through, most people do not understand. But do you know beyond it, the basis of their confidence was the fact that they were not alone. They were so conscious of the finished work of Christ, the victory that was wrought in Christ. Men like T.L. Osborne Reinhardt Bonke, with the simplicity of their faith, they commanded marvelous triumph. Today we make more noise than them. And there is a missing link, east and west of difference. In terms of results hallelujah if you preach a message like I've preached now in our generation 
people look at you and say you don't know much because in the mind of the church and in our pride being filled with knowledge we believe that redemption realities are too elementary for the results we are looking for yet unfortunately this is the biggest threat to satan you can teach any other thing that's fine you can teach opinions you can teach rituals but when you come to bring jesus as the epicenter of the believer's victory in fact you can even teach the victory of christ once you do not connect it to the believer satan is still comfortable the problem starts when you now begin to relate the victory of christ to the believer you are about to change that person's life for a long time i studied redemption only from the point of appreciating the extent of christ's victory but one day the Lord opened my eyes to see that, listen, the basis for all that is to empower you, to bring you into that God class. So if you stop at just studying Jesus and you do not see yourself in him, you will be limited, even though you know him. Are we together? So if I look at someone who is sick now and I tell him, stand up from a wheelchair. It is God who is at work in us, like you said, both to will and to do. But there is a revelation that sponsors that. A human being cannot produce that kind of possibility. How do you come and stand before someone who is medically crippled? You are seeing it, he's seeing it. Intelligence attests to the fact that this person is crippled. And then you come in the name of Jesus. You can recite the name and nothing happens. Because there is a consciousness that empowers the name. We use the name today as a ritual to our disappointment. What really empowers the name is the fact that when you are standing before that person, you are seeing the cross and you are seeing two people on that cross, you and Christ. You are seeing the grave. Your revelation is complete when you join him in that journey. Did you hear what I said? Your revelation is not complete when you see him in that journey. When you join him, that when he hung upon that cross, Joshua Selman was also there. Not because I could merit it. We were together in covenant. So every time Satan says, I want to stop you, I tell him you have to stop two people. Because that journey from then till forever is not about one person again. You and Christ now become that unbeatable team. When I hold the mic, it's two people speaking. You are only seeing one. But you are seeing the effect of two people. You and the glory of the Father. When you carry this consciousness, I am telling you, it will turn your life around. God can give you a project to build anything and go anywhere. And you will know that he spoke to two people. When you are conscious of being alone, you will fail in life. You are already defeated. Are we learning? The grave that is the reason why we can minister life to people today because we are partakers of the authority that sealed the grave you can look at someone appointed unto death and stand as a witness as an ambassador of the kingdom without bragging but with total confidence and tell the person i stand representing the government of heaven and we declare your life extended and it is stamped and registered in the spirit How about his resurrection? We'll talk about that in the night. But his ascension is profound. The resurrection gave the basis for his ascension. That he's seated today. You may not look like it, but you must believe it. Believing in that reality is what brings you in that place. Listen, everybody you admire today started from a standpoint of defeat. That is the default position for all men. But you grow your way through understanding. You grow your way through understanding. When you speak, you speak as an oracle of God. Knowing that you are speaking from that ascended position. You see, it's a position that demons understand. It's a position that the realm of the spirit understands. But the saints do not understand that ascended position. When you tell people, be blessed. When you tell people, may the Lord honor you. If you speak as a preacher, you wasted your time. In fact, if you speak as an apostle, well, maybe if you know you are sent. Or you speak as a prophet. But when you speak as one who is speaking from that elevated altitude in the spirit, as an ordinary believer, do you know, pastor, 
One of the reasons why men of God have so much trouble today is because we have refused to bring the revelation that reproduces victory in believers. So the burden is already destroying a few people and when the devil attacks one person, he can kill God's program at once. The gifts were supposed to prepare the body. Can I tell you, the proof that we are successful is that believers come up in an accelerated dimension into the stature of Christ. Not just that we are shining as preachers. Shining as a preacher is not the way the marking script was designed to work. No. The degree to which the average member in house of, household of David rises to a place of stature in the spirit is how you measure the success of Pastor Shola and his wife. And the leadership are we together let me announce to you in the name of jesus that we are coming into a season in the body of christ where there are men dead enough yielded enough to release themselves to be conduits for many to experience god in his fullness are we together now thank god for the lifting thank god for all of this but the days of celebrity christianity is coming to an end where god is finding vessels that are yielded passionate enough to see the body of christ grow the body of christ mature this is one of the things that god has been speaking to me about that it is important we adopt that revelation that john adopted that i may decrease so that christ will increase our assignment is not to self to sell flesh to market ourselves but that by any means under god we must become conduits that empower the saints bring to the saints the truths that are needed to build them holistically and connect them to the victory that is in christ i hope you know we are not the ones who produce the victory so if someone gets healed or someone gets delivered of course they would thank god for the vessel but in truth, the glory goes to the one who died and purchased eternal redemption. Ah, Elohim. Ah, Elohim. Ah, ah, ah. Elohim, hallelujah. Ah, ah. Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth E. Hagin of blessed memory. When God began to move with Kenneth Hagin, he was not the only one who caught that grace and that mantle in his days. But many of the people ignored the word and they kept building on experiences and shadows. And Kenneth Hagin made a statement. He said if they were not restored to the authority of the word to see Christ and the realities of redemption as the basis for their being powerful, they would not last. They laughed at him and all of them faded away. Hallelujah. Anybody who is not Christocentric in his approach, that means conscious of Christ and what he has done as the basis for your victory, the weariness that befalls all men will eventually catch up with you. So the day you feel you have not fasted, the day you feel you are not prepared, and let me tell you an honest truth. When you start active ministry, if you do not know this, you will be tired one day. No matter how anointed you are, take it from me. You will cry many tears in the secret until it becomes open. The reality of your weariness, regardless your spiritual activities, will soon catch up with you. It is in ministry you will see that the excellency of the power is truly of God. Hallelujah. Some of the most phenomenal meetings I have seen in my life were meetings where I did not feel any strength on my own. Hallelujah. You are aware of your insufficiency as you approach these meetings. But every time the frailness of your body catches up with you, you remember the cross. You remember Christ. You remember that his finished work. You remember that his death, burial, and the resurrection is the reason why the sick will be healed. There are times you are preaching to people and you can see unbelief on their faces as you are talking. Are we together? 
you know that if you depend on your strength, there is no skill that will make these people receive anything. At such point, you forget about yourself. And then you allow Christ take his place. And then you will watch the wonder-working power. Respect what defeated Satan. Respect what defeated sin. Respect what defeated the grave. Hallelujah. We're discussing yesterday, like pastor said, as I prepare to wrap up, we're talking about a great man of God is gone to be with the Lord now and one of our fathers in the faith who came into the faith life because his crippled brother became healed in that crusade. The man was shouting in Yoruba having his own crusade and then that man of God was carrying his brother born crippled and the man shouted in Jesus name in Yoruba. They didn't know anything much but Christ crucified. And they carried that revelation to the crusade ground and tested it with sicknesses and diseases and my goodness, elemental forces bowed before this man. Shouted in the name of Jesus and his brother dropped standing till today. And yet, I can share with you now, not to be sarcastic, I can share with you the Greek word for healing. The Hebrew word for healing. The Latin word for healing. The modern King James word for healing. And when I am done, then I now say, well, I hope that with these few points of mine, <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm not being sarcastic. I hope you are convinced and not confused that healing is yours. Let's go home. Not this man. Uh -uh, not this man. In 2004, I was in Joss when Reinhard Bonke came. I stood there for six hours. I was praying and crying. I was already a man of God. But I said, Lord, let something leave this man and land upon me. I've read his books. I've read T.L. Osborne's books. But what is it about these people? Sir, after the first day, I went back and by the second day, I said I would not, I would come and serve. I didn't just want to stand and receive. I was wheeling people myself on wheelchairs to the front and I was praying in tongues. I said, Lord, this is how my meetings will be too. I may not fully understand the dynamics, but I honor this man as touching what you have put in his life. I watch him preach a simple message, sometimes annoyingly simple. And you are wondering, okay, so what am I doing here? Hmm, the simplicity of the gospel. And the tremendous power that backs it. Reinhard Bonke took a cup of water so that he would minister the baptism. You may have heard my story. That was when my eyes was opened. And the first time in my life, I saw the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It was a giant bird, without exaggeration, moving across the entire crusade ground. I thought everyone was seeing it. And yet I was the only one seeing it. And the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. And the Spirit hovered around the face. Because he was about to pray for miracles. You see that now. I had read this scripture, but it has not become life. And then the man was done. And shouting almost as if he was losing his voice. Blind eyes be open. Sick bodies be healed. It's not that they told me. Part of the people I wheeled here, I saw them stand up. Come on now. Look, let me tell you, genuine result is the end of arguments. Genuine, repeatable results. Hallelujah. I watched blind eyes open. Some of them could not speak English. They didn't even know what he was saying. This guy imported a spiritual reality by light, not by gimmicks. It was from Reinhard Bonke Crusade, Betamax. You know those small Betamax? That was the first time I saw a man pray over sh uh, shrine materials and fire came out. It's not that they told me. I saw it, not in a vision. That was when they started the fire conference. I think it was in Congo DRC or so. There were skulls and other things. And this man shouted and fire came out. We hail you, we worship you, we hail you, O oh, Son.
Hallelujah. You've heard my story when I read about Charles and Francis Hunter. Not many people know them now. They've gone to be with the Lord. Two people. He started ministry in his 40s, sir. Charles and Francis Hunter. Remarkable people. Remarkable. There was a meeting without exaggeration. There were over 100 wheelchairs. One zero zero. 100. Imagine a congregation of 100 people and all of them are on wheelchairs. I watched these guys perform miracles. The way they perform miracles is not that they pray and when, when you are healed, you come out. People with cross eyes, you are watching it and everything correct in your presence and they laugh over it. And you are there with your zeal, finding, trying to look for God. And you are wondering, God, why are you missing? And he said, I'm not missing. You have ignored the secret I gave you. The secret is Christ. Christ crucified. The death, there is no revelation that can edit this reality. Everything is built upon it. Did you hear what I'm saying? You want to walk in victory. You want to walk in power. Return to the simplicity of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Not for everyone. To him that believes. To him that believes. To him that believes. I was going to apply for visa to go to US. I wanted to go and serve them for two weeks. I knew they would not stay long. And all I wanted to do was to go and scrub their toilets, wash sincerely. And then have an opportunity to study certain things. How do they pray? How do they talk to God that God is not hearing me like that? And yet the same Lord is rich unto all. I didn't want to hear stories. I bought their materials over 23 hours video on healing the sick. I sat with this thing, studied it one by one and said, Lord, where is this thing for God's sake? You see, eh? one of the things I'm praying the body of Christ will respect is number one, God. And number two, the sacrifices of men that brought them where God has exalted them. Hallelujah. This is a house of honor and I must tell you, it is true that the excellency of power belongs to God, but do not disrespect the sacrifice of alignment that brought people to the level of stature wherein God is glorified today. If it was cheap, all men will have it. All men can have it. All men should have it. Are we together now? But this is where the labor dimension of contending for eternal life comes in. We have to wrap up. When they died and I did not have the opportunity, I prayed. I said, well, they are dead, but spirit of the living God. You are alive and you are in me. You are the one who helped this man. What is the secret behind? You see, I don't want to complicate my spiritual life. Jesus glorified, my destiny exalted, dramatic results demonstrated. I don't want to waste my time. No matter what you say or do, the end of it is the results of transformation, the results of salvation, the results of the supernatural, the results of wisdom. Please do not downplay results. This is a generation that will not pay attention to you until they see Christ revealed in the fullness. The word became flesh and we beheld. You only behold what has become flesh. So when we talk about the resurrection, it is because God is using this topic to signify a season that is coming upon the body of Christ that there is a greater consciousness to begin to research where we have lost touch with genuine power, where we have lost touch with divine reality. And in truth, we have done well in terms of our personal press. We've exhausted our options. We need to return back. Usually, the secret to the complicated is in something hidden that is simple. We teach this even in organizational leadership. Behind the dexterous organizations in the world are very simple models. Very simple models. If the gospel was meant for all men, then it must be simple enough to be understood. Only God knows what can happen to you today if you walk in the reality of the resurrection. 
we'll consider acts chapter 4 and verse 33 in the night the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon how many there is a grace that is for all the grace that attests to the resurrection power of jesus is not just for a select few there is an election of grace but i tell you everyone is destined in christ that includes you are we together now that the power of god the wisdom of god the grace of god may be made manifest in and through your life let me recap one last time and we end that the basis for the believer's salvation redemption and victory is not just all that has happened from christ through christ but that it happened through christ for our sake the believer was the motivation behind everything christ went through and you must learn the mystery of his humanity and his earth work the basis for him becoming a man walking as a model a pattern man revealing god's expectation to us and then his death the bible says then his burial a seal an attestation to the fact that he died and then his resurrection finally his exaltation it was after that exaltation he said go ye therefore behold i give you power he says, go ye therefore. He released us not just with a message. He released us with a consciousness. If the only thing you have is the message without the consciousness, you will live a defeated life. Let's pray. Lift your hands in one minute and let's thank the Lord for what we have heard. And declare that this year, 2024, from this year hence, you are determined to walk in the victory that has been wrought for you in Christ. That your life and your Christian experience will be always extraordinary. Your life will be a rich capture of all the multifaceted dimensions of God. His wisdom, His power, His grace, His prosperity, His influence, His increase. That your life will be a representation of dominion. And from a standpoint of that victory, you will represent God to your world. You will represent God to whatever geography you are assigning. Take a minute to pray. We're wrapping up. In the name of Jesus, you are declaring by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm tired of living a nominal Christian life i'm tired of living a frustrated christian life i am ready to return to the order the order that makes for power the order that releases grace grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge through the knowledge of god and of our lord jesus christ the bible says we are his workmanship recreated in christ unto good works which god had before ordained that we should work in them In Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray now let me encourage you as I go to take my seat please I want you to take the time between now and the evening session take the time to pray and prepare your heart you have made a lot of sacrifices to be at this conference do not waste it let it be a defining moment are we together a defining moment you don't have to be in ministry to be that determined god wants to give value to your fasting value to your prayer value to your consecration he wants to give value by giving you the underlying revelation that powers all things a new fridge without its connecting to the source of electricity will not allow it work a new television when your gadget does not come on even though it is brand new, it is because you have not known how to connect it to the source. What gives life to every activity in the spirit is this revelation. It says upon this rock, what rock? The revelation of Christ and the revelation of our oneness in his victory. Don't forget this. It is not only the revelation of who Christ is now on account of the entire journey of his death, burial and resurrection, but the implication of that to you and I today that is where strength comes from. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, brethren, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amplified says, draw your strength from your union with him. Draw your strength. There is an abundance of strength that is infused into your spirit man, causing you to excel in an extraordinary way. And that that strength is drawn from the consciousness of your union with him 
please do invite everybody as many who you can draw to Jesus both online and offline and let's trust God to step higher in addition to all that we have received in course of this conference and in the name of Jesus I pray for someone that at the end of this conference your life will be a true portrait a reflection of the victory that the resurrection has brought to the saints the Lord bless you in Jesus name we pray